Welcome back to Rebuilding My Playing. For those who are following along in the series, and there's a few of you, um, yesterday's video is actually a live feed. And so I discovered today that to see the live feeds, you, you need to, on my YouTube channel where it says like videos, all videos, there's like a drop down. And so to see the live feed for yesterday's practice session, you have to drop down and click on live, uh, live streams because when you click on all videos, for some reason it doesn't include live streams. So if you want to see yesterday's video, um, it was it was actually really interesting to, there was about three to five, three to six people throughout my, my live stream. And it was interesting just to practice knowing that people were watching me. I felt a lot of pressure on those fourths. <laughs> but it was good, it was a good practice session. It was late in the day. I didn't, I knew I wasn't gonna have time to edit video. Um, I probably will end up using live streams a little more often as soon as the, especially with the semester starting. So today I have a lot of ideas, but I'm going to just start with the, I want to go back to the broken arpeggios and think again, even more about long tones in my top octave. And I, I'm at, you know, I moved everything. Well, I moved a lot of things home out of my my studio at school with the pandemic, but I didn't bring home like my books, my reference books. And so in Arthur Weisberg's, Weisberg's book, The Art of Wind Playing, he talks about the ratio of lip pressure to air um, with regard to uh, adjusting continuously for dynamic changes, changes. And the book is at school and I haven't, I didn't grab it. I was in there for meetings and I failed to grab it. But I want to just explore that today and see, um, just see what my experience is. And so I'm going to start with some long tones in my top register and mess around with changing my lip pressure um, as I change my dynamics. So I'm going to start on a high A. And for my first go, I'm going to increase my lip pressure as I go louder and then decrease my lip pressure as I play softer. Now I'm going to do that because in my mind, you know, it's all about um, allowing vibration, allowing the reed to speak through vibration, which means as we get softer, we need to typically loosen up our embouchure to allow the reed to continue vibrating so that it doesn't cut out. Um, which is why sometimes when we play really soft and we start to bite down, of course the reed cuts out because it loses that vibration. That's the most classic bassoon thing to do. You're trying to play soft and it just cuts out really early. So we have to reduce that lip pressure so that the reed keeps vibrating. Um, so that will be, that will be my first go. So increasing lip pressure as I crescendo and decreasing lip, pre lip pressure as I diminuendo. And I want to just hear how unstable my tone is, how much of, uh, how much of, um, the lip pressure is coming through the tone in, in the form of like the quiver. Oh, that was so profoundly awful. terrible concept. I mean, okay, I just did it twice. Really mindful of it. You know, it's interesting also, why am I doing this so mindfully? Because I'm rebuilding and so I, I'm really rethinking everything. And which means bringing principles um, back into contemplation that I've probably taken for granted. I also though noticed something else while I was playing. So I'm going to try this again. And whatever lip, lip pressure I start with, which is going to be in general a lighter lip pressure because I'm starting soft, I'm going to attempt to not change my lip pressure at all and just focus on pushing my air through but keeping a lighter lip pressure. <laughs> better where I didn't change my lip pressure 
and instead just focused on maintaining a very light lip pressure in general. I mean, it's by no means an even tone, obviously. Let's try that again. interesting. I noticed as I started on the diminuendo, it was about to cut out. And then I was like, wait a second, engage your diaphragm. Cause I realized my diaphragm was really doing nothing. It was just kind of sitting there. It wasn't, I hadn't, you know, I wasn't bearing down with it. I wasn't engaging it. It wasn't using those oblique muscles. Um, so that was interesting forgetting to actually use like diaphragmatic support. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to keep the light lip, lip pressure, but really make sure that I'm you know, engaging those, those abdominal muscles. That was really informative. Wow. I think I've gotten into a really bad habit of really not engaging with my core, which is super interesting. Super interesting. That makes me think of a lot of things. <laughs> Let me do that again. Again, I'm going to stick with the lighter lip pressure and really engaging that core. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, but what does that mean? How do you engage your core? I want you to think about the muscles you use when you do a sit up or if you go, ha 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 or uh, basically, if you're going number two, okay, uh, that's it's it's really that engaged. You're really using. You're actually using. You're you're flexing those abdominal muscles, and really, especially, I always feel the oblique muscles, the ones that are on the side. suddenly having an epiphany of how lazy my core has become. It's like shocking considering how many times I say that to students. Um, I'm also realizing that I lose, I'm losing energy. I'm losing the ability to spin my air as I come down. I'm like basically from the, the last four beats, I'm losing endurance. So that's very interesting too. pitch kind of wandered off, but the stability of tone was definitely improved. And do you hear how hard I'm breathing right now? This is so interesting. I just feel like I really am starting fundamentally, I feel like almost from nothing right now. Hmm. Wow. Well, if you needed a reminder about the value of um, abdominal support, I, I hope I just proved it to you in the past five minutes. I didn't feel like I controlled the pitch very well, but consistency of tone was, was pretty good. I'm also definitely very conscious now that I have to really increase the abdominal support as I get softer. I'm actually going to do it with a kind of a heavier lip pressure, not full heavy lip pressure, 
but just a bit more. Conscious, of course, always that I don't want to kill vibration. And then continuing my focus on engaging my abdominal support, especially as I get softer. heavier though because I feel like I like exhausted my core which is interesting Ooh, the lip pressure is getting really wonky because my pitch is dipping really low and I feel like I'm, I don't, I'm just lacking the endurance to keep engaging with my core. So again, I've said it a few times for those who are watching this series. Um, young people, if you are already in shape, keep, keep at it, keep at it. Strength and flexibility, strength and flexibility, really go after that. Let me, I, I want to try another note because again, all these, all these uh, top octave notes all sit in very different places. In general, objectively, I feel like I'm spinning my air pretty consistently now, but it is definitely, it's, now I feel like I'm very aware of deficits diaphragmatically. So that's very interesting, extremely enlightening. Interesting. My pitch just went so flat, a lot of lip quiver, but I think I'm definitely realizing more than my embouchure, the, the weak link is, is it's my diaphragm, it's, it's my core, my abdomen, whatever word you want to use to describe that. I feel like everyone says something different. Oblique muscles, abdominal muscles, diaphragm muscles, core, whatever. This part of my body is not, it's lacking the strength and endurance required to um, keep these pitches stable, and they're just so much more sensitive than even the bottom octave. The bottom octave issue feels like that is the cardiorespiratory issue where I just can't expand and fill and hold air, enough air, to make it through. That being said, let's pop down and see how I am doing on the bottom end of things. So I've been struggling to get past eight beats on a crescendo, so I'm gonna just see if I can do a nine beat crescendo. there's gonna be some variation in how in your uh, endurance of your air but that was actually I feel like the best so far <laughs> let me try again actually let me go to B natural because that's usually one that sits a little bit more open than B flat so it takes a bit more air <laughs> Attack is not not happy. Yeah, I mean, not very pretty, but I definitely, again, even with the bad starts, I I, I feel I, I feel definite improvement. I mean, I'm full on into that nine beat, into the tenth beat, which is. Definite, definite, definite improvement, no doubt in my mind. That's really exciting. <laughs> I 
I'm almost tempted to switch my read. I am gonna, I'm gonna switch my read and just see if I can do the same thing um, on a different read. Yeah, no, that's, that, like, that's real, that's happening. <laughs> wow, I feel such, like, immense relief right now. Yeah, a little short, about eight and a half beats on that B, but it, it, it definitely better, better. Yeah, I mean, I'm barely crossing over to the ninth beat, but in general, it does feel easier than it has in previous days. That's really exciting. I mean, there's definite improvement. There's no doubt in my mind. Really, just having like nine full beats feels like such a victory, but of course now my pitch is like all over the place. But part of being able to hold the pitch steady down in the bottom octave is really a consistent stream of air, lip pressures. I mean, your embouchure down in the bottom octave is basically no embouchure, so I'm not so much worried about that. The point is though, there's definitely a marked improvement. Single tonguing. I'm gonna start at 132 today. C sharp. That wasn't great. I don't like my reads are responding. Um, I also just feel like super exhausted right now. <laughs> Something about actually using my core muscles has clearly exhausted me, which just proves that I need to do a lot of work in my core. So that's good. I'm informed. I'm gonna keep it at 65 for my scales. I've been doing my, my scales completely tongued. I think I'm gonna slur them today though and kind of check in and see what's happening. <laughs> exercises are are nipping at my heels it's gonna be time to transition very soon probably next week still some a lot of hesitation just up in my top octave getting my fingers to the right place yeah I mean I think I think good things I'm actually glad I did it slurred because it's always good to kind of hear the connections when we tongue sometimes we we miss out on the opportunity to hear those those technical connections but we hear tongue and finger coordination, which is an indicator also of, of transition. But that was, it, it was good to hear that. I, I know what I wanna do moving forward with that. Okay, oh, you know, I forgot. I was gonna start, I was gonna start on A and work way, my way down through the keys. I am gonna do that right now. So starting on A so I can give more energy and attention on the front end. <laughs> to have um, really great patterns in your practicing it's also important to disrupt those patterns to make sure that you don't get into weird grooves so the fact that I always start exercises on B flat and then work up chromatically through the keys um, means that typically keys like you know uh, G flat G A flat A tend to get less energy consistently mentally where I get towards the end of the exercise, I might be feeling tired and so I don't quite give them the energy that I that all the opening keys do. 
And so flipping things around. I remember I had a really awesome colleague in the Chinook Winds, Usun Choi, um, clarinetist, and he said, have you ever played your scale starting from the top and going to the bottom and going back up? And I was like, no, I've never done that. And so we, he mentioned it as we were warming up before a, a symphony rehearsal. And so I sat there and started to play my scale starting from the top and going down. And it was, it was such a bizarrely different experience. So yes, patterns and, um, you know, patterns of, of approaching your practicing are really important, but then also maybe flipping some of those patterns upside down to encounter things in a different perspective, also very important. Let me continue. <laughs> In general, it felt a ton easier. Um, Penny approves. <laughs> uh, in general, the keys that usually always feel hard at the end of the exercise felt a lot easier. I had a lot more focus. And B flat, surprisingly, I could tell my focus was completely waning. I made silly, silly mistakes in B flat. So, wow, that is a testament to uh, you know muscle confusion, a term we hear in, in the fitness industry for sure just breaking up your routine to approach things in a different way and discover different things about about your routines. Um, man, today is a day of breakthroughs. I'm just so pleased. So I'm gonna move right on to fourths and I'm gonna start again on A and work my way down through the keys chromatically. <laughs> Feels so weird. I really wanna start on B flat. on that technique because I'm, I'm so involved in just um, of, of I'm so involved in being conscious of how my brain is struggling to process starting in the key of A as opposed to starting in B flat and an octave lower just I'm fascinated by how my brain is like really stuck and resisting this 
how much effort it's, it's taking my brain to adjust to the um, change in pattern that I'm, I mean, I know my tone doesn't sound good. I know my technique is not very clean, but I'm really just focusing on letting my brain um, find a different groove. You know, this, it's like it has to connect to a different synapse and it's really resistant to that. So super interesting experience tonight. Oh, wow. What an experience. <laughs> what an experience. I, yeah, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I feel like I've opened up my front door, but suddenly there's a new street staring at me. Wow, really interesting, really interesting. Change up your practice routines. I, I'm such a sucker for consistency and routine, um, but man, how exciting to just do something in a reverse pattern and discover a, a whole new, uh, like a whole new world. <laughs> I feel like I need to do something different tonight, which is a, a good indicator of a kind of a natural progression as I listen to myself in this rebuilding process. I feel like tonight it's like, oh, I don't want to do broken arpeggios, I've done a lot of fundamentals. So I think what I'm going to do is turn to the wonderful Kovar, the 24 Daily Studies. For those who aren't familiar with this great book, uh, the way I use it is I turn my metronome on 60 and I literally open to any page and I start working that page. I usually put a time limit on it, about 10 minutes. And I always find no matter how easy I think they start, they never remain easy. So they're nice. They're, it, it, they're really efficient ways to encounter intervals. You know, my undergraduate teacher, Mr. Crockett, used to say, I don't want to play an entire etude to discover that I have one interval that's you know, a mess. And so he, he's the one that put me onto the Kovar. And I really agree with that, that philosophy where let's just tackle those awkward intervals right straight on. And that's what the Kovar does. It just puts you into all these interval patterns and you find very quickly the ones that need special attention. <laughs> It's just awkward. 
octave, octave, G octave, and then A flat octave. G octave ascending, A flat octave descending. It's kicking me. confusion. I think tomorrow I'm going to do my scales starting from the top and going to the bottom and going back up to the top because yeah, that, that has just been really fantastic tonight. Just doing things really differently. Yes. Lots to celebrate tonight. Lots to be grateful for. Of course, many things on earth that need continue, continued attention and improvement, but uh, really so many, so many great victories. It's going to be fun to watch this and edit this. So I hope you watch this one and take some notes. Definitely like a lot of epiphanies about practicing, which is, you know, one of the many reasons I'm doing this is just to like rethink everything, to stop taking things for granted, to, to take this opportunity to rebuild and um, learn, learn new things about myself and about playing and hopefully teach to my students so they can be great players too. Thanks for following along and I'll see you tomorrow.